Talking about Queen's Gambit is often felt as embarking time machine and traveling to the past because it all, was always considered to be sort of cornerstone of black defense against first d4. Uh, in modern times, in, in the middle of the 20th century, in, in times of uh, Fisher, uh, it was considered to be very passive and um, many people, many players rejected it and uh, chose more aggressive openings. While we could always see comebacks, great players and many of their followers returned to the classical heritage and discovered new depths of this great most solid defense. So let's have a look and let's study the, the general history of this opening which survived all the turmoils and all revolutions in the opening uh, uh, history of the game of chess for nearly 150 years. So after d4, d5, c4, we are going to look only at second e6 and to investigate positions that are related to these uh, pawn's uh, composition. Of course, there are many other options for black in this position, but we are not going to talk about uh, uh, queen game is accepted, which is also a plausible possibility, but it's a subject for another survey. We are also not going to talk about second c6, which leads to number of options uh, classified in general as a Slav defense. Sometimes you could see the move c6 being, being uh, uh, inserted in, in, in the positions that we are analyzing, but still we are making clear distinction between Queen Gambit, Queen's Gambit and, and uh, uh, Slav defense, which is characterized by Black's chance of taking on uh, c4 or somehow playing a6. The general difference between Slav defense and Queen Gam Queen's Gambit is that with Slav defense, Black still hopes to develop the bishop on f5 on g4, while in, Queen, in Queen's Gambit, uh, Black is playing solid, protecting d5 square and hoping for uh, solving the problem of bishop on c8 later on. So. Uh, it was played, as I said, for nearly 150 years, and we, of course, move with the most natural reply of white knight c3. And uh, here again, we're not planning to go very deep into the uh, another side of, of um, Queen's Gambit, uh, so-called Tarish defense, where black is immediately attacking the center, in fact, agreeing to play a position with an isolated pawn. That's a new type of the positions. It was highly popular in, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, uh, but it lost most of its popularity after Akiba Rubinstein introduced a new system uh, with, uh, with the Fianchetto development, development of um, a bishop, uh, 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 um, light square bishop uh, from f1 to g2 and putting enormous pressure on uh, uh, black's pawn on d5. There were a number of classical games played by Rubinstein that in fact uh, uh, demolished, even demolished the um, mm, beauty of uh, Tarot's defense in the eyes of contemporaries and for nearly half a century it was put aside as an insufficient opening and eventually black uh, moved to a classical defense that was employed by that time uh, by such great players as Lasker, Kalklanke, and Alokin. Um, but the beauty, the beauty, and the, uh, the, the what's special about the Queen's Gambit? It's the beauty of the opening that it always makes a comeback. And when you study the history of chess, you could see as in the great players in 10, 20, 30, even 50 years are looking again at the classical composition of this opening and finding new ideas. So, to the great surprise of many, in, uh, at the end of the 60s, another world champion, another great predecessor of mine, Boris Spassky, employed terrorist defense against Tigran Pedrosian, the king of the positional chess. And everybody, when they looked at this Spassky's choice, uh, was so confused by this stupid quote unquote decision because how could you play against Pedrosian the positions with isolated pawn? In fact, Spassky not only survived uh, in his uh, winning match in 1969 against Petrosian, but
but even had a positive score winning one game with number of draws. Uh, because he had an, uh, an ability to look at these positions with, from a new angle and pose new, new problems that Petrosian was not able to resolve. And then there was another decline in popularity of this opening, and eventually it was employed by myself in the candidate matches uh, against Belyavsky, uh, Korchnoi, and Smyslov. And I did it very successfully by not losing a single game and winning, in fact, uh, three against such a great and powerful opposition. Uh, I remember the effect on Alexander Belaski when I first time employed this opening in, uh, in, in the second game of our match in Moscow in 1983. Uh, Alexander was shocked because uh, from his you know, general perspective, this opening was wrong. It did not fit the, uh, the conventional wisdom of that time. And he, he spent most of the time in the, in, in, in the opening trying to find, not a refutation, but at least, you know, clear way to get an advantage. And he failed and even lost the game, which had a serious effect on the entire uh, uh, match. Uh, and then I also arrogantly employed this opening against Anatoly Karpov. And uh, I had to face not only a great player, but an acting world champion who uh, was well prepared for this choice and demonstrated new ways of fighting an isolated pawn and eventually it ended up as a total disaster losing game seven and nine also not because of the uh, uh opening but probably due to the nature of the positions that were that fit karpov's style and uh, didn't allow me to show my tactical abilities uh, i dropped this opening but the story was not over and later on we could see come back uh, and other comebacks of Taurus defense and today White has no clear way of, of, of getting a serious advantage uh, in, 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 in a classical position you know which is which you could see here uh, after castle uh, sometimes White is going on bc5 bishop takes c5 bishop D, g5 d4 and bishop takes f6 followed by knight d5 queen d8 knight d2 uh, or uh, they play more traditional uh, playing bishop g5 immediately and after cd4 knight d4 h6 bishop e3 rook e8 we are seeing another classical tabia another classical position that was uh, uh, checked in many many games why is probably slightly better and you could look at dozens hundreds of games played them recently but black has enough defensive resources. It's not that the game is over. So, uh, as we could see, even terrorist defense, which is um, sort of a deviation from the traditions of the Queen's Gambit, is still holding. Uh, but now we want to look at the most important part of the Queen's Gambit uh, decline, of the classical cornerstones of this uh, defense that some people call the opening for the World Championship matches.